In this video, we'll show how you can make a voice AI agent for a bike repair store. And the agent can handle customer queries. It can check and update stock for different bike parts. It can check availability in our bike engineer's calendar and book appointments uh, with the bike engineer if the customer wants to come in and get their bike repaired. So this agent is built entirely with Telnix conversational AI platform and then integrates with Zapier MCP server. So there's no complex API integrations you have to build yourself. It's very, very straightforward. And of course, the Telnix platform has built in telephony, one click integration, nothing complicated. What's really cool, and this is a really unique feature we have at Telnix, is that while you're talking to the agent on the phone, you can also text it. So this is really useful in situations where maybe it's noisy and you're trying to get across your name or your email and you want to make sure it's spelled correctly. So you can just text the agent and then that text will be used as context in the conversation uh, by the agent, which is really cool. Okay, so just before we test out the agent, I just want to show you how easy it is to add calling and messaging. You can buy your numbers with Telnex in one click, and then you just add them here under edit your AI assistant. Same with messaging, you attach your number to enable SMS. And also if you wanted to do this in your website, you can add a little widget that will enable customers to speak and type to the agent on your website. For this use case, I think it makes most sense that it's a phone line. For example, if a customer was out cycling and they got a puncture and they needed to call the bike repair store, they're less likely to be at their computer. So we're going to demo this with just a phone call. Also, I just set up this Gmail account just to show you for the sake of the demo. It is brokenbikecaller at gmail.com. As you can see, there's no emails yet, but once the appointment is made, the customer will get an email automatically from the agent. So let's try it out. Hi, I'm Spokey the AI receptionist at Wheelie Fast Bike Repairs. How can I help? Um, I'd like to make an appointment to get my brakes replaced, please. Of course. Could you please tell me the type of bike you have and any specific brand or model of brake pads you need? This will help me check our inventory for the right parts. Um, I have a mountain bike. I don't really care what brand of brakes you use as long as they're compatible with my bike. Great. Let me check our inventory for compatible brake pads for your mountain bike. Please hold on for a moment. We have Shimano brake pads compatible with mountain bikes in stock. They are priced at 12 euros 99 cents each. Would you like to proceed with these? Uh, yes, please. Great. I'll reserve a set of Shimano brake pads for you. Let me update our inventory. Please hold on for a moment. I've reserved the Shimano brake pads for your mountain bike. Now, let's schedule your appointment. When would you like to come in? Um, would you have this coming Saturday at around 1 p.m.? Let me check the availability for this Saturday at 1 p.m. Please, hold on for a moment. We have availability this Saturday, August 2nd at 1 p.m. for your break replacement. Could you please provide your name and email address? You can also send them via SMS to this number to ensure accuracy. Let me know once you've sent it. Okay, I've just sent them my name and my email via SMS to this number. Thank you. Let me quickly schedule your appointment. Please hold on. <gasps> your appointment for a brake replacement on your mountain bike is confirmed for Saturday, August 2nd at 1 p.m. Thank you for choosing really fast bike repairs. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Uh, nope, that's all I need. Thanks so much for your help. You're welcome. Have a great day, and we'll see you on Saturday. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, so we can see the appointment was made in the bike engineer's calendar, so he knows that he has to be there. We've had our inventory decrease by one, so we're not going to sell any breaks that we've already reserved for customers. And then the customer received their confirmation email of their bike repair appointment. Great. So just before we walk through step-by-step step how to actually build this agent, let's take a look at our conversation history. So this top one here is the conversation I just demoed. And if you press view conversation, you can see the whole conversation that we had. The really cool thing is you can look at all the tool calls. So the first thing that the agent used a tool call for is to check the inventory. So you can see it used the Google Sheets tool to see if we had the bike parts in stock. And this is the response. It's quite a long response, but here is what it found. Then further down, this was where it reserved the brake pads. It reduced our stock count by one. And you can have a 
more detailed look at this yourself. And then for booking the appointment, first it checks the availability in the calendar, Google Calendar find event. So what it's doing is just making sure there isn't already an event in the bike engineer's calendar. And then the response. Yep. So that's where you can have a look at your conversation history. Now let's go back to the beginning and look at how we can build this agent. So there's three things you need to do before starting. First thing is to create an account with Telnix. It's very easy. You just sign up, create your account. Then you need to buy a phone number and you can do that under real-time communications. Go to numbers, buy numbers. And Telnix has a global directory of phone numbers. You can buy from pretty much any country. And then when you create your AI assistant under AI, AI assistants, and you edit your assistant, or you can do this when you're setting it up, you just attach that phone number under calling and messaging. So then the third thing you need to do before creating this assistant is create a Zapier MCP server. This is also super straightforward. You create your Zapier account, go new MCP server, select a client. So you select other because the Telnix portal is acting as the MCP client here, and then you can name it whatever you want and select create MCP server. I'll show you the one I've already created, but it's the same steps involved. So it was other, here you add your tools and then you connect it. I'll show you that in a moment. So for this one, we just had four tools. The first one was find event. And this is what the agent used to check availability in the bike engineer's calendar. So you just connect your account. You'll have to do some authorization. It's very straightforward. Zapier will walk you through the steps. And then for each of these fields, you can decide if you want to manually set what the field should be or have AI generate a value for this field. The only thing I've set is that it looks at my Google calendar account and the specific value for the calendar is this wheelie fast bike repairs calendar, as opposed to say my work calendar or my personal calendar, all of the other fields, the AI is figuring it out on its own, which is really, really cool. I'll save that. I haven't made any changes. Once the agent has made sure there's availability at the time, the customer wants, we've added this quick add event tool, which is similar. So I've added my account, the calendar that the agent should use and the other fields, AI figures it out itself. So have AI generate a value for this field. The next one is look up spreadsheet row. So this was when the agent was checking to see if we have the specific parts that the customer needed in stock. I've selected my Google account. It's in my Google drive. The spreadsheet it should use is, this is the name of it. I could have left this blank, let AI select a value which would mean the AI would go in and figure out the right file to use. Just to keep things a little bit more deterministic, I've added the name of the file, but it should be able to figure it out even if I hadn't added this and the specific worksheet and the column that the agents should search for the value. This column was called category and you can see here category. So it's looking here for the type of part that the customer might need. I had said breaks, so it's searching here for breaks. And then from the context in the conversation, it can see, oh, I need it for mountain bikes as opposed to like road bikes or the other types of bikes that are here. And the final tool is update spreadsheet row. This was when the agent was updating the inventory to reserve the part for the customer. So this is probably my favorite part of this agent. All we've added is the Google sheet to use. So the account, the drive and the spreadsheet inventory, really fast repairs and the worksheet to look at. So repair parts, everything else is have AI generate the value for this field. So what the agent did, it figured out how to do that itself. I'll show you in our prompt how we instructed the agent to do that. Okay, so that's how you set up the tools for the MCP server. Okay, so now we have our Telnix account, we have our Zapier account, we've bought our number and we're ready to actually build the agent. So under AI assistance, we hit create new assistant and it will bring us through step-by-step step how to set this up. So I'll just go through the one I made. So you give your agent a name, you choose your LLM. Here I used OpenAI, so I had to add my own API key. And then the most imp important part is the instructions or your prompt. So first of all, uh, I gave it an overview. You are a virtual AI receptionist, giving it a high level instructions of what its job entails, and then telling it to always use a professional tone, confirm appointment details, etc. And then this part here, this is important so that the agent knows what time it is all the time. So when a customer calls and the customer says, oh, I want to make an appointment tomorrow or this evening, the agent knows what time it is now. So it can easily figure out when tomorrow is or when this evening is. This is something you can copy and paste into your own prompt. It also says before you call tools, let the user know what you'll be doing. 
and don't call a tool unless you've already given them a heads up. So this helps. Sometimes you'll notice if you're playing around with this, the agent is using a tool and that might take half a second, but it doesn't let the customer know. So it sounds like it's lagging, but it's actually using the tool. So this helps the agent says, oh, I'm going to, you know, take a look at the calendar for you, or I'm going to book this for you while it's doing that. And then we set out the specific tasks we want the agent to do. So I've been very prescriptive here, but you could actually be less specific and the agent would probably still figure it out. So for each action I want the agent to take, I tell it which specific tool to use, but actually the agent should be able to figure out which tool to use without being so explicit. So the first thing I say is once the customer has explained their issue, you need to check the inventory and I tell it exactly what tool to use. Again, you probably don't need to do that, but you can play around and see how it works. I just wanted to be certain always that the agent does what it's supposed to do. So this is the fun one. So this is where the agent just figures out how to update the inventory itself. And it does it from just these two lines. So I say next, update the stock quantity of the required part in the inventory file using Google Sheets Update Spreadsheet Row Tool on the MCP server. This part is, that part was pretty prescriptive. Then I give it an example. So for example, if the customer requires one bike chain for the repair, subtract one from the value in the stock quantity column for the relevant parts. And then I say, when you've completed the update, tell the customer you've reserved the part for them. So with just that simple explanation, no complex integrations, the agent knows exactly what to do, as you saw in the demo. Then I say, your next task is to book an appointment. I specify the steps that the agent should take to book the appointment. Then I explain the process of asking for the customer's details via SMS. I tell them how to book the calendar event. So this part here, you'll find it when you're playing around. For some reason, the agent was booking two events, one for the bike engineer and one for the customer and creating two separate calendar events. So I needed to be a little bit more specific that it's just one calendar event and there'll be two attendees. So that's what you'll find when you're building your agents. You kind of need to maybe change the way you're explaining things to the agent. And then I say, finally, ask the caller if there's anything else you can help with. Then you can set your greeting. So every time the agent answers or calls, this is the greeting it will say. You can change that very easily. And if you needed to add dynamic variables, you could add them here as well. The hang up tool is automatically in all the agents. It just knows when to hang up at an appropriate time in the call. And you can see that in the conversation history when the agent calls the hang up tool. The next step is then connect. All you do here is you take your server URL and you copy it. And then when you're in your AI assistant, you add an MCP server, you go create new, you name it whatever you want, and you paste the URL here. That's, that's literally all it is. You can also use integration secrets instead of pasting the URL here. You can add a new one. You set an identifier and the value of it. It's a more secure way of doing it, but it works the same as if you just pasted the URL here. You can change your voice here, change your transcription model. You can also add a knowledge base if you wanted save your insights this is where you attach the number i can change my number here if i unassign this number i can buy a different number and add it here you can also add a different number for calling and messaging if you wanted to do that in this demo we want the same number so that the customer can text and the information will be used as context in the calling conversation as well here is the code you can copy and paste for your front end widget this is about data privacy. If, for example, you didn't want to store the conversation history, you just toggle this to do not re retain. Very straightforward. And here's our conversation history that I already showed you. So super straightforward. Hope this is helpful. Comment below if you have any questions. Excited to see what you've built.